So, uh, day one today, uh, the agenda will be gone through by Pace and Trina. So, for the introductions, uh, they will be going through the overall vehicle architecture and then the, the, a little bit about the canvas protocol, the can frame, and the car making tools. And for the hands on session, uh, they will be going through hand ICC and then uh, basically the capturing and playing of canvas traffic, uh, reverse engineering the can IDs, and spoofing the canvas traffic. So for day two, uh, day two will be controlled by Edwin and I. So uh, basically more about the different protocols within the vehicle. So the introduction to ISO TV protocol, UDS, MOS, LIN, factory, and automotive Ethernet. So uh, if today, um, if they are unable to finish going through all the ICC materials, we can actually go through them tomorrow as well. Right. So then after um, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., we will have uh, the CTF session. So basically, uh, I'm Alina, everybody. So uh, you may train your pace and everything here. <laughs> right? Okay, so we are part of the car security quarter, um, basically, part of the wider security community here in Singapore called Division Zero. Uh, there's a total of 20 plus members. Uh, so, Pace, Junior, and Edmund are part of the core team, as well as we have uh, many others like Lucas, Solomon, and Shazina. Uh, Lucas is here last to <laughs> right. So, uh, CSQ uh, also powers the Automotive Security Research Group in Singapore chapter. So, uh, ASRG is based in Stuttgart, and we uh, basically run the Singapore chapter of this. So the goals of CSQ is to actually facilitate and promote automotive cybersecurity awareness uh, to the cybersecurity community here in Singapore. Um, as we all know that the cars here in Singapore are really expensive, so hence we wanted an avenue to empower like-minded security enthusiasts in gaining hands-on experience. So we we'll do so by building test ventures and doing product research so that we can actually eventually contribute to the automotive security uh, industry. So, uh, and then do a community engagement and also virtual labs here, uh, like HIT sessions. So, without further ado, I'll be passing the session over to Pace. Okay, thanks, Alina. So, for today, I'll be going through the jury portion, then I'll be handing it off over to Chun Yong for the practical hands on session. So, I'll be going through the overall vehicle architecture right now. So as you can see over here in this, uh, in this diagram, you get to see that there's different connections within the car. So there's the CAN bus, LIN bus, and for today we're actually going to uh, focus mostly on the CAN bus itself. And if you can see over here, like there's different types of sensors that will be connected uh, within a car, and they mostly work the central gateway module. So moving on, uh, inside a the car, there's like multiple protocols. But the, these, like these five over here, they are the most commonly used protocols. So today we're going to go through CANVAS, which is a message-based protocol that you can just think of it as uh, the main way that the car communicates between uh, the different sensors. Then the rest is like uh, CANFD, which is the extension of the original CANVAS. So it's just like an extra, yes, it, it allows you to put in, include extra messages inside the uh the message is sent. Then there's local interconnect network with Slim. It's mean it's mainly used in the key uh, killer system. Then there's flex ray bus, most and automotive internet. So automotive internet provides interconnectivity within vehicles. Let's see next slide. Okay, so there's additional vehicle protocols and standards. So uh the first three are protocols, uh, sorry standards. So the first one is a serial communication between ECU, then afterwards uh, SAE J1850 is used for diagnostics. It's mainly used for like uh, diagnostics. So after that, let's see. Um, so, so for SAE J1939, that's mainly also used for vehicle diagnostics. And then for the keyword protocol, that's also used for diagnostics, but it's like OBD. It's used by OBD2. And ISO TP, 
Uh, that one will be going through uh, more about it in tomorrow's session. So that one you can listen out to Alina and Edmund's session for it. Okay. So for now, let me go through the CAN bus protocol and CAN frame. So the CAN, uh, the CAN protocol, so uh, the most important part is that there's CAN high and CAN low. So CAN high operates at 3.5 volts and CAN operates at 1.5 volts. Uh, so on the OBD2 uh, layout, the pinout, right, you get to see that CAN high is actually at pin 6 and CAN low is on pin 14. So that was actually one of the things that you focused on when you were doing up our first test bench and you were actually uh, connecting to these two pins and trying to test out, like kind of like reverse engineer away from there. Afterwards, Canvas, let's see, Canvas car uh, carries 8 bytes of data and can FD, because as I mentioned uh, previously, it carries actually like, extra, uh, it, has ex it has extra space to carry like more messages, right? So that's additional. 56 bytes of data. So let's see, differential signaling for fault tolerance. So can I actually, um, the difference between can and can is just about one volt higher and lower. So you get, if you connect it, you get to see the difference in the signaling. Uh, it's commonly terminated after 120 ohms impedance and the commonly supported volt rate is 500 uh, kbps. So, it's actually more more or less um standard across most of the vehicles that if you if you actually go and check it out. And the resting voltage is 2.5 volts. So in a can frame, there's multiple fields, but I think that for, for us what we want to really focus on is the identifier. So if you see the green the green portion and the data field. So these are the two most important fields. So what the identifier is, is a unique ID, which represents the message priority. Later on in the next slide, I actually have an example, so we can see it. Uh, afterwards, there'll be the data field. So that's actually the data to be transmitted. And the stuffing bit is, you can think of it as a keep alive. So let's say if there's like five consecutive bits of zeros, we don't, the card is the one that like, if it's, if it's an actual um, message, you don't want to think that is, uh, you don't want to think that it's dead, so that it, adds actually, it actually adds at one at the back, so that kind of makes sure that everything, uh, that the car knows that it's on. So afterwards, there's the CRC, so there's a second redundancy check, and yes, so let's go on to the actual can frame example. So as you can see over there, you see the interface. So SL can zero is the interface that is uh, that our computer is connected to. Later on, you get to see it. And then you get to see the can arbitration ID, which is one DC, and that's the at the end is the data field. So introduction to car, car hacking tools. So this is actually a list of uh, car hacking tools out there, but for today we're actually going to focus on can utils and IC sim. So in the example just now, right, yeah, this is actually captured via can utils. So. Later on, we'll, we'll be able to go through the uh, the different capture details. So let's focus on over here can utils socket. So can utils is a socket can user space. Uh, okay, basically is what it means is that you get to generate, replay, send, and display can traffic. Uh, via this particular tool, and we'll go through it later on, so that it's much easier for all of you to understand. Then afterwards, we're also going to work with IS, uh, IEC SIM. So IEC SIM is, think of it as a simulator. Uh, so if you don't have actual car, right, and you know, like, you don't have enough uh, to, you don't have enough money to actually like, build your own car, you can, you can build it virtually using IEC SIM. So can you deal with, as I mentioned just now, can you deal with, um, what is this is that, Okay, what it does is that using can dump, you can display, filter, and lock can data to files. So with this lock file, you get to use can player and then replay whatever, uh, whatever lock files that you've uh, you've recorded over there. And can send is for for sending a sing a singular frame itself. So let's say you want to replay let's start replay attack using a, a single um. A single message you can use it using you can do it using can send. Can gen is generating random can traffic, so it's pretty useful when it comes to fuzzing. 
because you get to, it sends like random can traffic and it's kind of hit or miss so like you get to see whether or not um, it actually works but it's pretty useful in that sense <laughs> yeah can sniffer it displays can data content differences but it's just like 11 bit can ID so you just uh, you get see the end there okay so I'll move on uh, I'll, I'll, pass, I'll hand it on to uh, Chun Yong who will go through with you the practical portion all right, thanks, Mr. Next slide. Okay, so um, so in case everything that was mentioned so far, you guys are new to uh, kayaking and everything, it may be a bit uh, daunting. Like, there's not a lot of tools or um, resources online to actually show um, how to actually go about um, doing car uh, car hacking and stuff. Uh, it's it's not easy to actually get started, and, and all, especially in Singapore for us, like it's pretty expensive to get a car. Um, so when we mentioned uh, that we use IC Sim, uh, it's a simulator software uh, that helps you to uh, simulate a car in a virtual environment. Uh, and it's not an entire car, so uh, ideally you would have a, a, an actual car that you could plug into, you plug a laptop into and see what's the traffic that's going on inside and simulate it and check the packets. Uh, in order to do that uh, safely and as a beginner kind of uh, way to introduce you into introduce people into this, uh, we use a virtual inf instrument cluster. An instrument cluster is basically the the dashboard that you see in, at, at the driver's seat, where you see the speedometer, you see uh, some of the other displays, whether it's the blinker lights or the uh, door opening or the seat belts and airbags, uh, stuff like that. So someone has created this uh, tool uh, that runs on, uh, on on a Unix uh, system on GitHub. I, the link is shown on the slide here. And it allows you to practice all this uh, reverse engineering in a safe environment. And, and, and there, are many, there are several different uh, difficulty levels as well. Uh, some where it's equivalent to uh, hard coding, certain like uh, not less, there's a lot less randomness inside the, the bytes. Uh, and as you grow increasingly in the difficulty, the byte positions will change or there's a lot of uh, other random noise that will actually come and make it harder. So this is a very good kind of a practicing environment for it, which we'll go through. Uh, you'll have a chance as well to to to, to practice with uh, some of the labs that we have prepared. Okay, so how to actually get IC SIM uh, onto your machine? So uh, we won't be covering like exactly how to get a virtual machine set up, but assuming that uh, you can find out there are a lot of good resources on how to actually set up uh, a, a Linux machine on your system. Uh, we are going to use uh, Kali, uh, which is what we typically use for pen testing and a lot of cybersecurity stuff, uh, to actually run uh, the host or the guest uh, virtual machine for, for IC SIM. Um, pretty simple like uh, stuff that uh, you can follow along. So these are commands uh, that you need to basically get the virtual machine ready uh, before you actually start to get it on board. So the first thing you want to do, uh, this isn't actually IC SIM yet. Uh, the things that you're going to be installing with using the app get uh, package installation tool, uh, you're going to be getting all these uh, li libraries first. Uh, after you down install the libraries, which is shown in the second uh, command sudo app get install li all these li library and images, uh, you need to install can utils. So we mentioned, uh, Paisu just now mentioned that there are a few uh, of the commands that like can send, can dump. Uh, these are fall under the suite of can utils. Um, so uh, when you install that, you actually have access to all those uh, different tools uh, that are available. Yes. Okay, so uh, we will talk about these two things like uh, can utils as well as ICC together uh, because you kind of need both in order to actually do anything for a start. Uh, so in order to install IC SIM, unfortunately, there isn't an easy way of doing it. The best way to do it is just to get it from GitHub. So you can use Git clone and uh, you can get it from this guy's GitHub page, Zombie Craig. Uh, once you've already uh, cloned the directory into your into your machine, you just uh, change your directory into IC SIM, which is what it's cloned into, and you do a, a file um, a directory listing. You should see there's some, some of the files inside that we're going to go through that you need to set up. Next. Okay, so the first thing you need to do uh, is actually to prepare a network interface. So it's similar to your Wi-Fi network or your local host uh, network interface. This will be the uh, in, in imaginary port that you'll be using to communicate with your IC uh, simulator, your instrument cluster simula uh, simulation. Uh, in this case, uh, there's already a shell script that's inside the IC sim uh, directory. It'll, it's called setup. Uh, a VCAN. Uh, a point of noting to note for this is that you'll probably have to run this as a sudo uh, user in order to actually get it uh, running a setup. 
uh, once you run it, uh, you shouldn't, you won't see any output if everything is fine. Uh, but if you do an IF config, you look at the interfaces that are available, you'll see inside the screenshot, there's a VCAN zero. So that's, uh, VCAN stands for virtual CAN. Uh, zero is just a number that's given to it. This shows you actually that, uh, that means that network interface has been set up for you, uh, and you are able to start using IC SIM to actually, uh, to, to interface with this particular network interface. Okay, so there are two other things that you'll see inside the IC SIM directory once you set up uh, the, the VCAN interface. Uh, these, two, um, these two programs, one is called IC SIM, uh, in small letters and everything. So that is actually the instrument cluster in itself. So if you look at the screenshot, there are three uh, windows that are shown over there. The top right is the IC SIM window. So you'll see that there's a needle and a speedometer shown as well as the blinker lights. And a little uh, wireframe of a car over there to show uh, what is the open and close of the doors, uh, the state of the, the car doors. Um, so the command IC SIM VCAN zero units, you have to specify what is your interface. In this case, we call it VCAN zero. Uh, and the end percent at the back uh, is to background this process so that actually you can continue to use the terminal because we're going to run quite a few things and these uh, GUIs will appear as, as, as in order for you to interact with uh, the, the simulated vehicle. Uh, so that's the display. You can't really do much with it. You'll most likely see it being static and not uh, doing anything. Uh, the next thing you need to do is actually to simulate a control surface. Uh, so what it means is that you, if you look at the screenshot on the bottom right hand corner, there's actually this controller over there with some labels on the buttons. Uh, so what this does, it allows you to do certain actions on the car. Um, there are only a few that are available for IC SIM. So uh, you can accelerate uh, the vehicle, you can brake, you can uh, lock or uh, uh, unlock the doors uh, and, and you can also turn on the blinker light. So there's only a few controls that you have there, but that's enough to get started. Um, so the controls, uh, if you run the control, then you see that screen up. If you select it and then you type in like uh, like up, down, left, right, or some of or the left or right shift buttons, you'll be able to control that. If you specify, especially if you have, specif uh, have specified the same network interface. So what happens is when you key in the keyboard entry, it will actually send the relevant uh, CAN bus signals into IC SIM and you'll see it reflected in the instrument cluster on the window on the top right. Uh, so that's all and good you won't, but you won't actually get to see the traffic, all these kind of things just happening under the hood. Uh, the last thing that you kind of want to open up, which is more part of the CAN utils uh, suite rather than IC SIM is CAN sniffer. Uh, so CAN sniffer, in, in, in you look at the third command that we have on the slide, uh, and you specify the, 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 the interface VCAN zero, what it will show you is actually a live update of what are the CAN messages, uh, what Pacer mentioned just now, the CAN frames and stuff. Uh, two, the two things that you kind of need to know, one is the CAN ID or the arbitration ID. Uh, basically, it's just the, the, what is the component that's being controlled. It's, a, it's, a, a, it's to identify what's the thing you're trying to control. So uh, example, acceleration is controlled by, or the speed is controlled by a certain CAN ID. And the message that is put, uh, the few bytes after that is maybe the speed reading of it. Uh, similar for the car doors or the gears or something else, it's similar to this idea. You just need to care about the ID as well as the data at the end. So if you look at the screenshot on the left hand side, you'll see, uh, the live updates. You know, if you specify the minus C, uh, flag inside Ken Sniffer, what you will have is actually you will highlight to you in red, uh, the bytes that are actively changing over time. So you, whatever you see in black, uh, in black font, it things that are static. They actually don't change. And it, it allows you to visually kind of pick up what are the things that change accordingly while you are actually uh, modifying the vehicle, we are controlling the vehicle. So they can identify, okay, this is the bike that is changing as I am moving this vehicle. So kind of visually over there, you, can, you are able to then piece together like, okay, what is the CAN ID? What's the data I need that actually controls this particular function of the vehicle that you are doing? And you can slowly change bits and pieces of all the bikes here and figure out you know, whether you can uh, access either hidden functions in the vehicle that are not available for you to control, uh, or like other things that you could make the car do things in not the right order, like like show up all the gears, uh, even though they are like um, not supposed to go in a certain order and stuff. Yeah. So this is just a generic overview. We'll probably go into a lab next. Okay, I'll cover a bit more on some of the other uh, can uh, can utils uh, tools before we actually. Uh, get you guys like hands on to, to work on some of this. Uh, so we already saw can sniffer as the, one of the five things that we're going to cover for can utils. The next one is can dump. Um, can dump itself is similar to can sniffer. The difference is that for can dump, it's actually just a print screen of every single 
combined. You can think of it as a log. It's just logging down every single traffic that's coming at every single point in time. Uh, the difference is that, it, while this is good for you to log the entire activity into a file, it's not very easy for you to kind of visualize uh, easily. However, this will be very important like when uh, you actually are able to get an actual vehicle connected to your virtual, to this interface that you have. Uh, there's a, there's a, there are other uh, tutorials on how to do that online, uh, but you can do, actually do a can dump of an actual vehicle. Uh, what this means is that you can actually save this file somewhere else, bring it to an, uh, a virtual cluster, bring it to another device or another car for that, for that matter, and actually replay it. Uh, replay this uh, can dump uh, log file and it will actually simulate all the activity that was happening in that previous car. So can dump itself is a very good tool for using uh, to, for, to use for actually uh, understanding the behavior. You can also um, truncate or like locate those uh, can IDs that you want using grab using your favorite uh, file editors and stuff and you'll be able to just isolate the can IDs that you want and replay the traffic. Uh, so can dump is itself also even though it seems like it's going to be not that useful. It has its users in certain situations. Uh, you can, the, the format of saving it by default, you can specify what's the, the format of saving your can dumps. Uh, by the default, it will tell you the year, month, and day as well as the time that it's actually the log was taken. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as mentioned, how do we actually replay a can dump uh, log after we've done it from can, uh, from can dump? So there's this, uh, tool also called can player. This is a third tool we're going through. Uh, can player basically takes in an input file of can dump, uh, of the can dump log, uh, log, a file stream that, that, that is dumped out from can dump, and it will replay it on an interface that is specified inside the can dump log itself. So the can dump log, uh, file it has a certain format. If you look inside, actually your interface is also specified. So it will just replay it as if you don't have to specify what interface it's on. Uh, if you press after you run the command, you'll see, uh, We'll do some examples later on. You'll see that whatever things you simulate on the controls, we're going to do a can dump, uh, save this file somewhere, and then we'll do a can player, and you'll see that actually the same kind of traffic is generated. The needle will move in the same way as well. Yeah. Okay, so can sniffer, we already mentioned uh, previously. So it is uh, basically like can dump. It's just going to do a live update to you of what's, hap of what's happening on the, on the can bus itself. Uh, there are other things you can do on can sniffer. Uh, we, we don't use it that much, uh, but it definitely helps if you are isolating can IDs. You can actually, uh, specify the can ID you want to isolate and look at, and it will actually, uh, kind of, uh, stick that one out for you so that you, uh, can focus on that can ID. So can sniffer is actually just for you to kind of look at traffic live as it's happening. Okay, so we're going to go into the first lab. There were some instructions on how to actually get them set up. Uh, so we're going to take about, how much time? We're going to take about like 10 minutes or so, just to get you familiar uh, about uh, some of these things. Try to get uh, IC SIM set up in the way that I was mentioned. Uh, hopefully you guys have your virtual machine or something set up already. Uh, yeah, so you want to open up IC SIM. Uh, if you have any difficulty of doing so, you can uh, uh, like ask. Uh, in the chat or inside the slides.app.google.gl, uh, the thing that what is shown at the top of this slide, uh, some of our moderators will also help to answer some questions that you may have. Uh, get it set up. That's how we just mentioned in the slide itself. And then uh, once the controls are up, just try to um, try to get some of the traffic to come out. Uh, if you are using Cam Sniffer, you can you will be able to see some of the bytes that are changing. Maybe just try to visually identify what is the acceleration and deceleration. Can IDs, so just the IDs, you don't have to look at the data itself, just see what is changing. Uh, try to um, get this all, and then we'll tell you the answer in a short while. So we'll take about 10 minutes of this, uh, then we'll kind of demonstrate actually how it's done as well. Yeah, so take 10 minutes. Let us know if you need help uh, with the installation or anything like that. Yeah.
Uh, no, we are currently actually uh, on mute right now. So now it's just like a uh, let practice time. So we'll go through in about 15 minutes. Yeah, so let us know if there's anything. Yep. Oh, okay. okay, I understand that you guys may not have the slides. So what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to share my screen instead. Okay, and what I have is actually what is set up already. So uh, can you see? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, so what you are looking at is uh, what it would, it would look like if it was properly set up. So with the three uh, IC sim in the top left, in the top right, the controls on the bottom right, as well as the can sniffer that's already running on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it here for a while uh, and I'm going to do some actions and you can see, I don't know if you can see because it's, it's going to be live, uh, what are the things that are changing. So there are a lot of can IDs on the left hand side over here, it's quite about like 30 or so, 30 to 40 or so. Um, and a lot of things are changing in red here, right? But nothing is kind of happening because I haven't actually done anything right now. Yeah. So I'm going to do an acceleration. I'm going to press the up arrow right now. You're going to see the needle move and try to see if you can identify what is the can ID that is moving, that is changing with the needle as well. It just visually kind of looks, it's still accelerating. So find anything that remotely looks like it's, it's, it's corresponding to what is showing on the needle. Okay, so not sure if everyone noticed, but as you see that this needle is moving, the answer for this acceleration and deceleration is actually can ID 244. So I'm going to let the needle drop all the way to zero. I just want you to pay attention to 244 over here. And I want you to look at the second last byte over here. Right? So currently it's saying this is all zeros and then this is zero one. Since every, all these, uh, can IDs, the, the back, uh, the last byte is actually, it always, it's always changing. Uh, you, you don't have to pay too much mind to it. So it's, it's all changing. It doesn't really mean uh, much at this point for actually figuring out the activity. But if you look at just this zero one and let's say what happens if I actually try to accelerate again, watch as, uh, ID 244, uh, the second last byte kind of increases. So this is how you can identify that that is the can ID and the data that is actually responsible for the speed of it, of, of the vehicle itself. So granted, this is actually a very contrived example. It's a pretty simple one. Uh, in actual vehicles, it may be as simple, but some uh, in, case, in some other cases, it may not be as simple. It may not be uh, such a nice number, like zero, uh, everything is zeroed out and then it just gives you that last byte. Sometimes it can cross over to other bytes. Sometimes particular bytes uh, will be responsible for uh, this behavior. But let's, let's try something else. Let's try, uh, according to the slides, door open and door lock. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open uh, up some of the doors. And we'll see if any of the bytes actually change. Okay, so I'm going to open up some of the doors. Okay. You may see that actually uh, something happened with the can sniffer itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a bit smaller so that you can see all the can IDs. And I'm going to shut the door. And I'm just going to keep opening and shutting this door periodically. So try to identify what's the can ID. Do you see it? I feel like the already explorer here. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Okay, so for those of you who may be able to see it, so can ID 19B, 19B, you see that third byte is the only thing that is changing. And if I don't do anything for a short while, you see that it will disappear because nothing is changing with it. So certain can IDs can only appear when you actually do certain actions. So in this case, we have uh, 19B. And this particular door I'm, I'm opening, I'm not, there are four doors on this car. Uh, if I open up more doors, you'll see diff like the same can ID, but different uh, bytes that are changing. So let's open up more of these other doors. So as I slowly open and close each of the doors, I wonder if you can see that at least the different bytes that are responsible for that. Okay, so that's the second example. Uh, the third one was on right turn and the left hand signal. Okay, so I'm gonna try it one more time and see if you guys can actually notice. Okay, so I'm gonna do a right signal. Okay, I'm gonna stop. All right, signal again. Stop. Okay, so hopefully you guys should be pretty well versed by this, but it's the same kind of pattern. So if you notice what's happening on CAN ID 188, 188, you'll see that first byte, it oscillates between 00, 0 and 0, 02. So if I stop doing the arrow, you see it stops, it's, it's all zeroed out. If I do the left arrow, it says 0, 01. And if I stop, it's still, it's all zero. So yeah, so we kind of already successfully identified the three like biggest, at least this, whatever is available for this IC sim, uh, the three different functions, the IDs that are responsible for, uh, this, um, these three actions, right? There's the blinker lights, the, the acceleration of the car doors itself. So visually, you can see that just can sniffer alone and just running this actually is good. It's a very good, like, starting step for you to actually uh, understand how reverse engineering car can IDs can work. Given that we can just replay this here, uh, we can also take the, the, what we understand here and then generate our own traffic, uh, whether it's, uh, just to a proof of concept traffic to actually do other things, make a car show that it's actually maybe going at a different speed, uh, than what is currently happening on the vehicle itself, or making the car think that the car doors are open so that maybe it, it won't move, uh, if, if it's actually tied to the car doors being open or closed. So there are many things that you can do. This is just kind of an example to, to start, to get you guys started on it. We're going to go back to the slides. Right. Yeah, so here are the answers. So, two, so the CAN IDs are 244 for the acceleration, deceleration. The right, right and left turn signals are CAN ID 188, and the door unlock and lock is 19B. So visually, you can already kind of see these things using CAN sniffer. Okay, next. All right, so once you've already figured out, okay, these are the can IDs, what else can I do? There's so many bytes that are left unused, right? Maybe they actually do something. Um, so this is where you can craft the packets out yourself. You, you don't exactly, you won't always have like a control stick to kind of actually uh, change the vehicle, um, uh, what's happening on the vehicle itself. Uh, granted, all the can IDs that you have don't always have a visually uh, impressive, like kind of a very big overt, uh, uh, indicator that something is happening. Some things like, um, the, the engine R R RPM, in this case, we don't have the RPM sensor, doesn't mean that it's actually not being uh, generated by, by the simulator itself or the car itself. Uh, so you're going to really need to experiment and look at different ways of, uh, of getting out all this information. The, the, the most, uh, like, reliable way of doing it is if you have access to the wires itself, you can actually go and uh, detect whether it's a high or low analog signal or digital signals are actually coming out of it as you make these changes. Uh, but in order to actually spoof some of this traffic, you can use uh, can send. So this is uh, the fourth can utils um, uh, tool that we're, we're mentioning. Can send basically is like the scappy of, uh, of, of, of can utils. You, you generate like one uh, single uh, uh, can, can packet itself. 
In this case, you specify the second, uh, the, the second variable, vcan0, which is the interface we've always been using, uh, followed by this uh, format of the can ID, uh, followed by a pound or a hash key, and then followed by the bytes that you want to uh, add into uh, this, this can ID itself. So this is an example of the can ID. So we already understood that 244 was actually the acceleration of the vehicle itself. So if we want to send a particular like high speed of the uh, uh, of of the traffic itself uh, without actually controlling the vehicle itself, uh, we can specify the data. In this case, the last two bytes, um, the last byte itself is actually what we identified. The second last byte is what we identified as the one that controls the speed. So we can put any number we want, any hex num number we want. In this case, we'll put eleven, and it will show a bit of a deflection of the needle here as shown in the screenshot. You can try, given it's, it's a simulation, you can try any kind of digits you want. You can start fuzzing around, start playing around, see what happens on the vehicle. And that's really uh, what you're trying to achieve with CanSend itself. So CanSend on its own is just one packet. Uh, on, it, it, since it's running uh, natively inside your Unix shell itself, you can just make a, a very simple loop to keep on sending that same traffic over and over again so that it persists and you're able to maybe more visually see if it actually changes anything. So bottom, at the bottom here, it shows like an example of while true, uh, do this uh, can send message, keep on doing it until I kind of interrupt or actually exit this command. And, and that will help you to actually use can send in a more robust manner. All right, we're going to try this again. Uh, um, so given that you may not have access to the slides, uh, we uh, and, and it's it, in the interest of time, and I'll just try to demonstrate some of these things. So we're going to split the traffic to change the values of the speedometer, uh, similar to what was actually shown before. We're going to bypass the speed limit. So actually there's a hard uh, speed, speed limit that's set as 220 mph on the speedometer. Uh, and no matter how hard we press on the control, it will not allow us to go past that. But with can send, we are able to actually bypass that. We're going to keep both the right turn and the left turn signals up at the same time. We only were able to do one at a time just now. Uh, and we're gonna keep the right stick. We, we can do the, we can, we can make sure that it doesn't blink. So just the right turn signal is just lit up all the way without blinking the left turn signal as well. And we're gonna unlock and lock all the doors as well. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. Set. Okay. So we're back to the virtual machine itself. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna, Look at uh, how can we uh, make this needle actually go to maybe the 60 RPM. So we already know that it like, was actually this 244, this can ID 244 that was responsible for it. So let's see what happens if I do a can send, like we mentioned uh, previously, and I'm going to put it to vcan0. And the can ID is 244. Um, hex key, uh, hash key for, to, to, to denote the difference between the can ID and the data. And we're going to put a bunch of zeros. Let's look at the can sniffer. How many bytes is this? Uh, three bytes of zeros, uh, one byte, and then followed by some random uh, gibberish over there. So three bytes of zeros. Uh, we're going to do maybe 11 as well as the example, and we'll give something like a four for that last byte. And if I just press enter, uh, okay, nothing seems to happen. Or if you can see it fast enough, I'm not sure if it's showing on screen, the needle will jump and then it will jump back down to zero. This is because it's actually fighting with the controls. You're not the only one sending a can message. Uh, the, actually the control itself is also sending a message, which is why it's actually jittering on the, uh, on the, on the IC symbol there. That's why we actually wanted to actually fight more vigorously. What well, we're sending the spoof to packets is fight more vigorously. So we're going to do a while true function. While true, we're going to do this can send message and then we're going to specify done. So now you see that there's a very weird kind of behavior that's going on uh, on the IC sim. It's, it's deflecting, it's going back to zero because there are two different things. There's my program, there's my can send that's trying to send this message of go to this number, but at the same time the control is saying no, it's actually zero. And that's why it's kind of deflecting back and forth. So what happens if I send a bigger number? So I don't send 11, let's try a big byte. Let's try like 50. What happens here? So we see that the number actually jumps a lot higher. So that's good. We know like now we can actually just figure out how big this can go. What happens if we put like a really big number, let's say FF? Can we actually bypass that limit? So yes, you see that the needle actually jumps all the way to the end. So you could script this out. 
The idea is that this is the kind of behavior you expect to see using Kensen. You can do things that you couldn't do on the controller itself. And that's very reminiscent of like how vehicles are as well. You can send possible CAN messages that may not have been possible on the vehicle itself. Okay, next we're gonna try for the left and right blinker uh, uh, on the on, on the top here. So as we control on the controls, you see that if I press the right uh, arrow, I'm actually just holding it down. Uh, you see that it's blinking. So I want to actually make it stay uh, rather than blink. If we look back at uh, at can sniffer, we remember that uh, the blinking uh, arrow is due to this can ID 188, and it's the first byte that is changing between 00, 0 and 02. All right, so armed with that kind of knowledge, let's do the same thing. So we're going to do a while through, and we're just going to change the can ID to 188. And this first byte, instead of 00, zero we're going to put 02. And the rest of the bytes, uh, we can just leave it as zero. Yeah, I think it's two zeros. So if you press enter now, you'll see that now the right arrow has permanently like uh, left on. And that's good, that's nice. Okay, how about with the left arrow? We saw that there was actually a different uh, can ID that was. There was a different data that was uh, responsible for that. So if I press the left arrow, for 188, you see now it's zero, zero, and zero, one. So that's the same byte that's being used for the left arrow. So if we change 02 to 01, the left arrow will come on. Now, what happens if we want to keep both of them out? Like it's a hazard light or a parking uh, light where you want both to come on. Well, this is actually just hex. So in, in, in the fashion of programming, it just means that these are bits that need to be on. And 01 is just one bit. Uh, 02 is just the second bit that's on. So if we change to 03, what do you think will happen? Ah, so if you can think of it in terms of the binary instead of just the hex. So 03 will actually make both of them light up as well because it, it will just mean that those two bits that are responsible for uh, the arrows will actually just remain on. Okay, so next we want to open up all the car doors. Right. Previously, we already noted that it was... Let's try to open up the doors. So it is one, one nine B that is responsible for the opening and closing of car doors. So there are actually four car doors. So it is controlled by the A, X, B, and Y. And you'll see that if when all the cars are open, uh, when all the car doors are open and when they are slowly being closed, the signal that the data that is being sent to nineteen B changes on the third byte over here. So these are actually specific bytes uh, or specific bits that are actually responsible for this function. You have to kind of look at all of them uh, and piece them together if you want to make the correct sequence of actions uh, appear uh, to you. Uh, since this may take some time, uh, I'm pretty sure that if you follow the same example of the blinker lights, you'll be able to figure it out as well. Uh, I'm going to go to the slides to show you the answer instead so that you don't uh, waste time. You can cover more details. But I hope that you get the idea of that uh, this is how uh, you can practice using uh, IC SIM itself. Okay, so all these I was already showed you how to bypass the 220 NDH. You can just send in whatever bytes you want and see what happens on uh, the IC simulator itself. Next, uh, this would be for the signals. So for door locked and door unlocked, uh, it would be that middle byte uh, that we really saw. So zero F will open up uh, all the car doors. So F would be actually all the bits for that particular uh, half a byte be odd. So there are four doors and there are just four bytes, so F will just be opening up all of them. Yeah, and unlock will be just basically zeroing out, out everything here. Yeah. Okay, so that's all I have to cover for IT Sim and uh, Can Util. So hopefully that is enough to get you guys uh, going in terms of uh, introduction into how you can understand, how you can learn and practice. Uh, there are additional difficulty levels uh, which actually randomize or the can IDs that are responsible for each of the functions. So you can practice your own intuition and see whether you can identify which are the bytes that are responsible for the behavior. Uh, if uh, you are interested to find out more, we actually have some of uh, these uh, IT sims set up uh, on our, our virtual instances uh, over here at the car hacking CTF. So if you participate in that, you'll be able to log uh, to to go in and practice on some of these random uh, bits that we have actually configured for you guys. So we're going to, I'm going to talk more about the Kayaking CTF guidelines. 
So if you're interested to join, uh, the CTF will start at 3 p.m. So right after this, uh, this, this, this talk, uh, today and tomorrow, after the talks, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m., uh, you will be able to, to, to participate in the CTF itself. Uh, the instructions are also on our website, uh, over here shown at ctf.carsecuritycourt.org. Uh, we'll, we'll be able, we'll post it somewhere as well in case you guys don't have access to the in the box website as well. Uh, create an account. Uh, there's a few things that you need to kind of set up before you can actually join. The reason is because these are actually uh, a lot of physical. We don't only have uh, in virtual instances. We have some real life test benches that we actually uh, put together for you guys. So if you are really confident in doing it on the virtual machines already, why don't you try it on the physical benches that we have real vehicle parts that are here for you to actually test out your skills on. Uh, so because of that, you will need to queue people in. Uh, this will be done using a combination of Twitch, uh, Discord, and uh, the CTFD, as well as uh, something called Zero Tier. There's a lot of uh, things you probably have to install. I uh, hope that you take the time to actually slowly uh, get to know. If it's any, in any case, if it's confusing to you guys, feel free to just reach out to any of us. Uh, we'll help you and guide you along on, on this process as well. Yep. There's also, uh, if you go on to our CTF, uh, carsecuritycourter.org, under the queuing page, there's actually we actually included a, a video in there. So it, because we recognize that it's very difficult for everyone to uh, jump across different platforms, so this will we're hoping that this will help you um, get started more easily. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so once you have uh, already logged, uh, registered for all these things in our Discord, you join the Discord channel. You uh, you are looking at the Twitch uh, the Twitch page where we show actually the live feeds of all the. Uh, what's happening on the on the on the test benches and the uh, physical clusters and the virtual machines that we have? Uh, you join the Twitch queue. Uh, certain commands you need to type in, specify which are the instances you want to enter. And once it's your turn, we'll let you know. You can log in, you can SSH in, and start to try to figure out. You have thirty minutes to play for each of the bench, and you're allowed to requeue. Uh, however, it is best to make use of a time that the team have a game plan before you actually go in. Uh, there'll be a countdown timer on the Twitch stream. You'll be able to see your team will be able to see what you're doing. And you should be visually able to pick out some of these can IDs and uh, CTF answers to those. Yeah. So that's about it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we are going to see for any more questions. If there are any questions, uh, the there was the Google. Uh, there was the Google Q and A. There was the Google Q and A link. Link that was that's now missing. Uh, yep. someone can put, it's posted inside the chat, so you guys can click on it and uh, copy it and see if yes, was we'll send it again. So if you have any more questions about uh, what we have covered so far about the CTF, uh, please feel free to ask over there. Or you can also ask us over in the Discord. Yeah, ask us in the Discord. Ask us even on the chat over here yeah. in, in, in Zoom as well. <laughs> we'll be happy to answer anything that we can. Unintended. If there's, anything, <laughs> if there's anything that you don't understand from today's session or so, ping us. Yeah. Uh, reach out to us. So, um, yep, that's about it. <laughs> okay, so it's recording for those of you late. Yeah, I think it should be. I think this session is actually recorded. It's recorded, yeah. So, so the hang in the box people will probably uh, make it available to you guys uh, in a short while. Uh, we'll leave it to them to, to communicate with you guys uh, on when the recording will be available. We will try also update our Twitter yeah. when everything's up. Yeah. Yeah, try this right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of okay. course. Yeah, Everything's yeah, public. Yeah, yeah. anyone's public. able to join this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> please go ahead and yeah. share yeah, more ahead. About, yeah, with your friends. Yeah. No worries. Any other questions? I think the tough part for this is that you guys will also definitely uh, encounter a lot of issues. Like I think when starting out, this this can be very difficult or challenging because you just don't know. There's so many things you need to get right in the sequence before you actually get things going. Uh, but it's uh, like feel free to ask us. We are here to answer any questions. We we went through a lot of the beginner steps as well. Uh, day two tomorrow will cover more in detail some of the more advanced advanced things that you did. Uh, what we've done so far probably may seem very basic, but it's actually a very good starter for those of you who are new. Any instructions for installing so, zero tier? Okay, so I'll answer the one on no other attacks covered in the CTF for the workshop. Uh, we don't cover particularly attacks at this point. Uh, right now we are covering more on the reverse engineering uh, process as well as looking at the can IDs and the things that are uh, understanding the vehicle first before we actually move on to the attacks itself. Uh, you want to read more about the attacks? Uh, I'm pretty sure there are other like um, uh, speakers or other people who are doing automotive security 
uh, who will be able to cover more about these threat uh, profiles or threat vectors itself. I think actually, like, um, one of the people that we really look up to is actually, like, Dennis. If you see in the group chat, hi, Dennis. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So if we need to know which ID is for which purpose, all we can do is fuzzing all cans. Well, in a sense, all you can do is a very, it sounds like it's a very bad thing, but there are a lot of things that you, as a consumer, as a person who bought a vehicle, you can only control using the car itself. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this vehicle can, doesn't like, doesn't shut off the access to using those can IDs itself. Uh, many car makers share the same parts. So you may be able to access different functions. Uh, this is also how people hack cars to actually give them actually more, uh, like you want to program a car, like every time the car door is open, play some sound. Uh, this is probably how you want to do it without damaging the car. There are things that you could probably do that are mildly illegal, like spoofing uh, the the speedometer so that you can always say that you are under the speed limit. You could say things, you can do things like spoof your fuel indicator so that you can go into Malaysia, you know, in a, in a particular way. You, you could do things to, to, in this case, deceive people. Uh, you could turn on the headlamps or shut it off if it's controlled by the can IDs, causing accidents in a very dark place. You could probably break it by just tossing the entire machine. We don't know. Uh, this to each car is different. You are, it's, a, it's a process of reverse engineering and understanding. There's not there, there are like spot pieces covered. There are more than just can messages that's being sent in the vehicle. Uh, car makers nowadays are quite smart. They try not to put everything on the can. Uh, more critical functions are not necessarily on the can bus itself. There are more critical uh, buses itself with higher speed, but more more uh, security built in as well. Uh, the thing about Ken is nice is that your computer, once it's plugged in, no one knows any difference in the broadcasting message. There's no identi identity kind of verification whether you are actual thing on the car or not. Yeah, so it's a good starting point to actually figure out uh, attack surfaces on the car. Yeah, it's not all there is. Uh, there is a lot that can be done using just Ken IDs. Okay, so uh, uh, we're seeing some questions on the installation for Zero Tier and Kali and stuff. Uh, Zero Tier itself is something that's also pretty new to us. Uh, we have a lot of success in using it in terms of how we control access to you guys in a remote session uh, on a physical uh, physical badge and stuff. Um, do let us know if you encounter issues. We can't promise to fix everything, but we can tell you what worked for us. Uh, yeah. So, so I'm sure some other people here would have uh, also had some experience with zero tier. If you went for DEF CON, some of us, we uh, also had experience using zero tier for some of uh, the CTS over there as well. Yeah, ask around, search around. Uh, if not, uh, we'll, we'll try to figure out a way to help you with that. Yeah, Alina shared uh, about some kind of text that we tried. Uh, it's on our YouTube uh, channel. You can watch it over there. Okay, we see time. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, so so that's all the time we have. Uh, feel free to ask us some more questions. Join our Discord chat and you can ask us more stuff there and join the CTF as well. Uh, we hope to see you guys also tomorrow uh, as we go and continue more about uh, the more in-depth advanced stuff inside uh, the kayaking itself. Yeah. All right. All right, so, thank you very much. Yep, yeah, and we hope to see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you at the CTF as well. All right. All right, see ya. Bye. Bye.